So, Mike Tannenbaum, a nation turns its lonely eyes to you, and, and I think back to what you told me you expected to happen before this season began. The Broncos wake up this morning at 1-5. and five. Watch the next move. Sean Payton is putting everybody on notice that I didn't acquire you. You're here. You wouldn't have been here if it was up to me, and you could be benched. And, Greeny, we got 18 days to the trade deadline. Jerry Judy, Graz mentioned someone like Josie Jewell, and even Russell Wilson, who has guaranteed money, they are all available, and Sean Payne has a really big bat in that facility, and he is beholden to nobody, and he is saying, you know what, I told the ownership when I took this job, this is a massive rebuild, and look at the product I inherited. Why do you Whoa. look like that part? He said it was a massive rebuild. This was a team that you know, great quarterbacks were clamoring to go to because of the talent. You know, I think Sean Payton has to take a lot of credit because some of the decisions I'm sure we'll get to later uh, contributed to the loss. So he's compounding the, the, the bad decision making because he's making bad decisions as the leader of this team. And maybe can we say that he's making having the worst coaching job that we've ever seen? Yeah. Oh. They make you laugh, make you cry. And he's doing a, a worse job than Nathaniel Hackett did last year because they were in a better situation. The defense played better. We don't even recognize the defense even though they played better last year um, than they played this year. But he's made them worse. Greeny, to that point, Hembo reminded me of this. 229 starts between Drew Brees and Sean Payton. Last night's QBR by Russell Wilson was worse than any time in 229 starts with Drew Brees. In fairness, look, Kansas City's defense is good. Uh, Broncos short week it's on the road. All those things are hard. But this was the low point, right? I mean, Russell Wilson's had some lows this season and others. People have spent this whole week trying to tell me how good he's been this year. Uh, last night certainly was not an argument on that side. Everything's relative. He had, for the first four games of the season, five games of the season, been better than he was last year. But that's not saying much, right? And then last night it was a complete disaster. So I think the point Mike T is making is a good one. But if you're Sean Payton, you come in here, and now you're one and five, and you know your mandate is to is to make the team into a championship team. And if you say, well, I can't win with this guy, I can't win with this guy, we need picks. Let's see who we can move out of here in the next couple of weeks before the trade deadline. And then in terms of the quarterback, you know, what do we do? Do we do we take a look at Jared Stidham at some point? Do we, you know, do we think about how where we're going to be in the draft and what we can do at the position next offseason? How movable is Russell Wilson's contract? I think all that stuff, all those conversations are happening very soon, if not already. Here's the, the first problem that you have, just organizationally speaking. And I understand there was an ownership change, which sometimes leads to this sort of thing. But in consecutive seasons, they have essentially given total control of the organization to two different people, right? They became the Denver Russell Wilsons two off seasons ago. Yeah. Now they're the Denver Sean Paytons, and he wants to get rid of Russell Wilson. Well, we don't know that, but it, he could, yes. Oh, fair enough. Sure. But, but we're speculating that he might. Look, after last night, be kind of tough to think otherwise. Yeah. Let's go to the first pick, because I want to try and figure out how much of the blame. Look, the Broncos are a mess, okay? It is an unfortunate mess. Yes. This is a team that was bad last year and has gotten worse. Let's look at the first Russell Wilson interception. Right. His eyes never move. Right, he's staring down the receiver, but he's seeing the hook, the curl flat guy, right, go to the flat. So he's reading the defender. The defender moves from one zone to the next. So watch right here. The first guy, see, he's in the curl window. Now he goes from the curl to the flat, but the hook curl guy expands his zone from the hook to the curl. So he never sees that guy undercutting. That's basically cover three, four underneath, three over the top, and he doesn't read it. He's reading the one defender. When the defender moves, he don't realize that somebody else is replacing him. That is elementary football. Cover three is something that we learn from Little League, that we understand that if you send somebody to the flats, that it's somebody, and usually the widest guy is responsible for the flats, right? And he's also responsible for the force in the run. Why right? it has hook flat, right? Curl flat. But the hook curl guy expands. Once somebody expands his zone, he never sees him. That is football one-on-one. That is elementary, junior high, peewee league football. And, and Russell Wilson missing it there. So, obviously, a very bad night for him. But Sean Payton didn't have a great night either. For those of you who didn't see, and, and if this had been a much closer game, I think this would have been a much bigger deal. Let me show you how the first half ended. It wasn't in the highlight because it took a lot of setting up. But this is the Broncos with the ball near midfield, third and five. Chris Jones is going to sack Russell Wilson. And then inexplicably, Denver called timeout, not Kansas City. Denver did. And then after a bad punt, KC winds up turning it into a long field goal. After the game, Sean Payton explained why he called the timeout. That's a boneheaded mistake by me. They were calling one as well, and I'm off it down. But that, that, that was stupid.
well. He never takes full responsibility. Yeah, I mean, they were calling one as well. He always deflects, right? Oh no, like, I mean, take yeah. it, take it to yourself, man. Like I messed I thought, up. I thought he was just saying that as a way of saying yeah, the, e even worse mistake. Like I could have just let them call it. But I, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, does that I mean, to be clear, when he says off a down, he thought it was it, was, it was now not third down. Yeah. When in actuality it was fourth down. He calls a timeout, and the Chiefs turn it into three points. Greeny, I'm screaming at my TV. Like, in 30 years, I've never seen that before. You're punting and stopping the clock at the same time. What's really scary, though, candidly, is nobody on that staff is comfortable to tell Sean, you're making a mistake. No one – he's, like, beyond reproach right now. Like, he made a huge mistake, and no one's there to be able to tap on the shoulder. Hey, coach, let the clock run. That was a sack, not an incomplete pass. Let the clock run. Let's get out of the half. Yeah. He gave them three points. Yeah, yeah, he gave them three points. They they needed to get – they barely got it, right? It was a 60-yard field goal. Yeah. So any any second, any extra timeout could have led to that. Look, it's a complete and total system failure from the top down in Denver right now. Uh, they couldn't have imagined it going this badly. Now that it has, they've become one of the most interesting teams in the league because of what they might do next. Yeah, super high-profile people – and this is when you start to figure out, because the relationship between Sean and Russell, let's face it, it was an arranged marriage. It's not mm -hmm. like the, the yeah. two of them selected each other. Although the one thing I will keep coming back to is that Sean Payton took that job knowing who the quarterback right. was, yeah. knowing what the franchise had invested in him, both financially and in trade capital, or excuse me, in draft capital. For much of the, well, let's say the first month of this season, it was easy to blame the defense. They were historically bad. The reality is... The defense didn't lose them the game last week against the Jets, and the defense didn't lose them the game last night. You hold Kansas City to 19 points. Who's that game on last That's night? That's on Russell Wilson. Now, Sean Payton didn't cover himself in glory on the possession they had before halftime. You got stopped on third and five. It was a sack by Chris Jones. You forget what down it was and yeah. call a timeout and save time for the Chiefs to position themselves to get a 60-yard Harrison Butker field goal. Inexcusable. Good players can't overcome bad coaching. I get it. But Russell Wilson, the two interceptions, they were all on him. That defender that's coming unblocked, you got to find a way to work that football around him or just don't throw it. But again, another situation where he's putting the football in harm's way. And, G, the one that is a mind-boggling gaffe by the quarterback, the first drive of the game, you work the ball in the plus territory, it's fourth and three. What the hell are you doing, Russ? Throw the football. Give somebody a chance to make a play on it. Give somebody, give the refs a chance to call defensive holding or DPI. Or, to, to, to take a sack punt. and to go out of bounds, that is inexplicable. It doesn't make any sense. Now, Even an interception there is better. Right, it's better. It's a punt. Exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So th right. those are the things that a quarterback that's 34 years old and that's making $48.5 and million has got to be better in. Situational awareness, being able to execute, Everybody wanted to point to the numbers earlier this week and say that Russell Wilson is having a bounce back here. To me, last night's game is evidence that you can't just look at the numbers. You actually got to look at the tape. And Russell Wilson has not been good. I am not impressed with him putting up garbage time stats that are meaningless when it comes to your team's overall success. I tried saying that this week, and everybody yelled at me. I mean, I, look, I, got, I have been summarily yelled at for trying to say that this week. And people want to show me, oh, his numbers are just as good as Patrick Mahomes. I don't know. I watch the games. It doesn't look like Patrick Mahomes. Again, here's the tip picked here. So, so Bart, as you sit here and analyze, let's say we had never seen Russell Wilson right. before. Because his past is so confusing that it sort of skews the evaluation. Right. If you just evaluated what we've seen this year and we see last night, what would you say? I'd say he looks like an inexperienced quarterback that had you know, bad decision making, right? We talk about the first interception. You know, soft play action. He predetermined where he was going with that ball. Maybe he wanted to get Jerry Judy involved and get him a happy. But when you talk about it, it's basically cover three. And the curl flat defender goes to the flat. And the hook curl player expands. Here's so the he, and he's eyeing the whole time. He's not working anybody with his eyes. It's a two-man route, max protection, so he has time. See the late check down right there? That's where the ball should go once you see that the hook curl player is expanding from the hook. So right here, curl flat player. He goes to the flats because he sees the, the, the flat route. The hook curl player expands to two. That's where the ball is going. He, he, he eyed his, his, his receiver down the whole time. Easy pick by the linebacker. I agree. What's really interesting about Bart's point from an evaluation standpoint, you want to see week-to-week -week progress. Last week in the Jet game, Sean Payne's yelling at Russell Wilson, you're hot to the back, you're hot yep. to the back. And that's when that fumble ended the game. To Bart's point, that's exactly what happened last night. 
He could have just checked it down to the back. So yep. tell Canty what you told me earlier. You believe Sean Payton is saying this morning to the people who pay his salary. I am beholden to nobody. I inherited this mess. It is not <laughs> my fault. And they could be benched. I got 18 days to trade whoever I want. Man. Jerry Judy, Russell Wilson, despite his contractual complexities, they are all available, Mr. Walton. I have five years. I will fix it. But I need a clean slate. If he can find somebody to take Russell Wilson's contract, he should go in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> right. I'm sorry, man. There is no way they're moving that. Yeah. Great. No although, way. although I will say this, we're seeing more and more of this in the league. If they eat a large portion of that 17 million, that could potentially change the dynamic. You know what? It, it, this is worth people watching, right? Because Russell Wilson's got a a 2025 injury guarantee of, of, of like a $37 million salary. Yes. If he were to get hurt playing this year, and they're on the hook for not just guaranteed money in 24, but also 25. Right. So you keep an eye. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the right? fifth day of the new league year in 2024. Yeah. So that's something that you got to watch. That's a lot of money that the Broncos would be on the hook for. If you're Sean Payton, you're saying, hey, guys, I want to bench Russell Wilson to send a message to my locker room. And in the process, I'm going to save y'all some money, too. So <laughs> I, I get all of that. Here's the question I want to ask. Yep. Anyone watching the game can say, boy, that quarterback looks terrible last night, and we can sit here and say that. You don't need us to tell you that. Here's the question I want to ask you. Sean Payton comes in, and boy, he had a lot to say when they hired him, right? And I get it. He was an analyst. It was, Rex has had a lot to say also. And, and he, but Sean Payton, he's got a lot to say. He comes in there, and quite candidly, that team is worse. They're not better than they were a year ago. Yep. They're worse than they were a year ago. Russell Wilson, maybe a little bit better in some games. Last night, not so much. We talked about him missing up the downs last night and calling the timeout when he shouldn't. We played the soundbite earlier. Terrible mistake. I, I guess mistakes happen. The question is, how much of the responsibility should fall on Sean Payton as he's walking into his, his bosses and saying, get rid of all these guys, they're the problem, it's not me. Not a lot of it. Not a lot of the responsibility is going to fall on him as long as Russell Wilson is there. Russell Wilson is the fall guy for Sean Payton. Mm. It was always going to be that way this season coming in. Russell Wilson was bad when they gave him all the control under Nat Hackett in his first year in Denver. And so now ownership is looking at it and saying, we made this commitment to Sean Payton because he said that he could try to get us turned around. But I think, honestly, if you're talking about the front office with the head coach and ownership, they were closer to a rebuild than everybody else understood. And I think Sean is saying, this is the evidence. What we're doing is the body of work, which is why they're stripping Son, it down but, around. But, but here's why I push back, yeah. though, because you can have a rebuild and still show improvement. Right. I don't see this team getting better. You, there's no oh, offense. The, there's, there's no place you can say, hey, these young players are actually getting better. They're going backwards. But they're getting rid of players around him. They got rid of Randy Gregory two weeks ago. They're right. shopping right. Frank Clark. Yep. Jerry Judy is thought to be on an auction yep. block. They are stripping Justin this thing down, and, and Russell Bowles. Wilson is still trying yeah. to live in the house. But it's basically, it's basically because of the decisions <laughs> that he's made, because he made the decision to bring in Van Joseph and not hire Rex Ryan. He made the decision. I'm sure he had a whole PowerPoint presentation when he was talking about how he's going to make Russell Wilson the next Drew Brees and all that type of stuff. Listen, he wasn't a good coach, you know, at the at his end of his tender with the Saints, right? He's living off reputation. He's running an old offense. The league has passed him by. He has to hit the refresh button on them old-ass plays that he's going because nobody's falling for them old banana in the tailpipe. Quick grip. question. Did I miss a meeting? When Russell Wilson got to Denver, weren't we talking about them the like best a team that was going to go to the Super Bowl? Yes. Wasn't it? Didn't, didn't we all think Aaron Rodgers wanted to go there? Because there was so there. much talent there. Here this spring when they made the hire for Sean Payton, and I told you this is going to be a conflict when it comes to the two players, the, the quarterback and the head coach, right. stylistically. Right. They did not blend. Sean Payton is very much so play within the structure of offense. Quarterback hit your back foot, get the ball out and on time, two and a half seconds or less. Russell Wilson made his name off of second reaction plays, right, okay. using the legs, using the athleticism to extend the down. Those two things don't go together well, okay. hey, and that's what we're that's seeing play but, out. But, but great coaches do what? They adjust their system to the personnel they have. So quit talking about what another man did and his coach's job. Wait, 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 wait. Just to be fair, right? Like, you're, you're not talking about a 25-year-old Russell Wilson, right? If he's going to still extend plays at 34, it's not going to look like it used to look. So I'm not, I mean, you're not absolving Sean Payton of anything, but I think Russell Wilson might not have been, you know, fixable when Sean Payton got there. And if that's the case, that's what he then I them, think, though. you know, Mike T's been making this point since the offseason. I don't think it's out of the question that at some point this, this season you see Jared Stidham for a couple. One of them is a square peg and the other one is a round hole. I always forget which one doesn't go in what. But whichever <laughs> way it is, it doesn't.